Preston Perry, well-known speaker, poet, author, podcaster, preacher, all the things. He went on to podcast called The Truth in Studios, and he went on there talking about marriage, talking about Christian marriage, what it, what marriage means for men. And in this video, we're going to give our reaction to it, so that you all can get an idea of what Christian marriage is really like. So check this video. Hope you like it. To get in the conversation, so then, okay, so then as a Christian, what, um, and I understand this is a big question, but like, what should we expect out of a marriage? Like, I know it's a big question, but yeah, like, like what, if you just kind of had to describe like what you think marriage should look like, cause there's people who haven't had marriages to glean from. How would you describe it? Like, yeah, man. So before he goes into what he describes as a mm. Christian marriage, what would you define as a Christian marriage? I first just think of what Paul said in scripture and just a comparison. How for, of course, in this the Corinthians, mm -hmm. I believe I don't think it was Corinthians though, but how he was saying, you know, it's a mystery, but he compared it to Christ's love for the church. Mm -hmm. And one thing that we know about Christ and his love, it was sacrificial. Yep. He gave fully of himself. He, y'all, like I've said on, on our podcast before, you know, when I say he gave full of himself, even to the point of there was no self gratification in it. There was no definite, you know, in his, in the sacrifice that he made, like he literally died on the cross for a maybe. That was Ephesians. It, it was Ephesians. I figured Corinthians is the love chapter. <laughs> yeah. Is where love. Ephesians 5. So, yes, Ephesians 5. And so, um, you know, it, that's what I think of when I think of marriage. You know, I think of sacrifice and you it's it's literally you laying down your rights. You, you know, where you feel like, you know, oh, you may feel like oh, I have a right to be upset. You lay that down yep. at his feet. You know, um, whatever that thing is, it's literally sacrificial. The other S, though, is I, I know I knew this even before I was married, but even being married, I learned this more and more. The Lord uses marriage as a tool to sanctify us, mm -hmm. you know, to, to, to purge us and rid us of that pride, that arrogance, mm -hmm. that defiance, that, that, that desire to tr be independent and do things on our own. And he rids us of the things that ultimately separate us from him. Yeah. Let's hear what Preston says. To to give you the, the 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 initial biblical answer, right? Okay. And then kind of go into more practical things. Yeah. A marriage is a picture of the gospel, right? And so Ephesians five lets us know that you know it says husbands love your wife like Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. Um, you know, having uh, so we can present her faultless and without without rock, spot or wrinkle. Then it says, um, wives submit to your husbands as to the Lord, right? And so I think what that basically means is that, man, like marriage looks like a husband sacrificially laying his life on the line to love someone that God has called him to. Right. And it looks like a, a wife submitting to that love, not submitting to rules or I think you're going to touch on that as well. Mm -hmm. I think that's the problem that we have in today's dating culture, especially that's oozed into the church. Because we'll look at what the world is doing as far as how what they think of what marriage is and how um, I was listening to a sermon by Paul Washer and he was talking about um, why men, you know, he, he, he was speaking to a young college men and he was asking them why they wanted to get married, you know, and uh, why the, the woman that they that they chose or the girl that they were dating, why, why they wanted to marry her. And most of the times it was for selfish reasons. Like, oh, she makes me feel this way. Oh, when I'm around her, I feel this. Oh, oh, she she like uh, does this for, for me and I experience this with her. And like, she just, I just uh, feel lovey-dovey and happy inside, right? But it's like Paul uh, Paul Washer then, then goes on and, and says that all those things, okay, great, they benefit you, but what should be the reason why you want to get married? Because if that's the reason, then don't get married. Um, cause 
what is clearly written out within scripture, especially within Ephesians five, is that uh, it's a sacrificial mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. One to glorify God. If you want to get, mm -hmm. get married, do it, but don't do it for yourself. Do it to glorify God. But then two, know that when in doing that, it's not a benefit me, me, me kind of thing. No, it's it's serve, it's lay down, it's give up. Why? Because that's what Christ, you know, as yeah, Pastor was saying, it's what Christ did for the church. Yeah, because when you think about it, now we talked about this before, but the cross was of no benefit to Jesus. It, there was literally no benefit. The benefit was solely for us. Mm -hmm. One thousand percent. He was good. He was without spot, without blemish, without wrinkle, sinless, did everything perfect. The cross had no, absolutely no benefit to him. None. It was not about He, he literally, literally, that was the most selfless act of mankind. Yeah. You want to know what does it look like to be married? What does it look like to have a thriving marriage? What does it look like to love? Look at the cross. Not submitting to rules, but submitting to a, a, a sacrificial leader, you know, who loves her selfishly um, to give the world a picture of the gospel. And so I think initially that's, that's, that's my first, like the biblical answer of yeah. what a marriage would look like. But to be real, marriage looks like work. It looks hard. It's hard. You know, it's, it's, I tell people all the time, if God gave us a spouse that meant our every condition, we would never learn how to love unconditionally. Mm -hmm. Which means that, that marriage is, um, it's work. Uh, it's, it can be tough. Uh, it can be strenuous at times, but it's beautiful, you know, mm -hmm. and so. All of those things, man. So I, I really want to dig into this because there's a lot that's being. Yeah, I I think that's true, and um, it's also, as he said, beautiful, and it's also you know, rewarding for others to see too. When when it's done mm -hmm. in submission unto the Lord, it's a beautiful thing for others to uh, to witness. Mm -hmm. Um, because I've I've witnessed that you know we witnessed that ourselves with, with our friends and, mm -hmm. and, and how you see the Lord working in their lives. Mm -hmm. It's like, man, like it's, it's like a breath of fresh air. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's, that's it, just a beautiful thing. I, I do want to kind of skip ahead because he does talk about, um, and I agree with you and I want to real quick. Cause I like how you said it's, it's beautiful to see. I think that is important that, you know, I, I actually thought about myself in my single season and I thank God for the women who were in my life. God blessed me to have rapport and um, to be in fellowship with the women who were married of different, different ages. I had women um, who had been married for 30 plus years, 10 or seven or five or whatever. And I was given the privilege to see them in different um, situations, in different atmospheres, in different um, seasons with their husbands and how they how they handled certain situations, how they carried themselves, how they spoke to their husbands, how they spoke about their husbands and how they honored the how they honored one another. Um, I think that it's important in our seasons of singleness when you are single to be able to see what you what to do. And what not to do, you know, there may be some things that you see in other marriages where you're like, okay, I, I may not want to do that, but I guarantee you, if you're around the right people, you're going to see things that you also want to, um, you want to, you, you want to, you're going to see those things modeled and you're going to also want to go live that out. You're going to take that and say, Hey, I want to serve my husband in that way. Or I want to have a husband that honors me in that way or speaks about me in that way. I think it's very important that we're, we're, we see these things, right? Because a lot of us are visual. I'm visual, okay? The Lord knew that. I'm visual. So I tell my friends this now, but they didn't know I was paying attention like that. Like I wasn't taking notes, but I was taking mental notes. I was like, man, oh, I see how she did that. You know, because you don't know even you could come from a, a good marriage, but you don't really know, you know, all the ins and out. But it is good to see um, marriages on display before you kingdom marriages on display. Then. All right. So I think then like as men or, or maybe even women listening to this, you might think, OK, well, then. All right. So if it's all this work, 
like you described, you talked about the beauty, right? What's beautiful about it that makes the work worth it? You know what I mean? Like, man, because on the other side of hard, it's always beauty. You know, like I think that a, a lot of times people want love, but really, like, like you become, you really become more more in love when you've been through some things. You, when you say, "Man, I, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't been through this, we didn't got through this, and we still here loving one another," um, because you know that that initial love is just kind of like. And I'm not saying that every marriage is going to be like super, super difficult, and you're going to want to lead. Like I'm not saying that every marriage is different, and so I'm not trying to speak ignorantly for all marriages. But what I am saying is that when two people come together and they become. Uh, marry in close proximity, there is going to be friction at times. It's just, it's just natural, right? And it's like, and so how you are willing to work through that love will determine how much you will grow in love together as time goes on. We as Christians, we, we want to know that our, our reward doesn't come from the work that we do. Our reward comes, comes from, comes from heaven, you know, um, being conformed to Christ's image should be key. And I think in doing that, we we got to leave the rewarding up to our our, our, our heavenly Father, because it's like, um, yes, we'll we'll get rewards here. Like for instance, you know, you'll get partnership, you'll get um, friendship, you'll get uh, someone that you can just do life with, um, that 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 you could be a safe space around, um, all those things. But ultimately, like you can have someone like that. But then still feel empty if God is, isn't the one that's filling you and if he isn't your reward. Because ultimately, I mean, as great as marriages are, I mean, they don't compare to the kingdom. They don't they don't, uh, they don't compare to really being just trans transformed by Christ and being and being with 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 God. Like that's the ultimate key. But, you know, this is just a mere reflection. It's like a. It's like a drop in the bucket of what it's going to be like to be with him, and 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 that's a and that's a good thing. And so I I think when you see when you see people enter into marriages, I think you started to see that love progress, like like decline for one another because they come, they came into marriages with all of these empty expectations mm. and nobody really prepared them for the real. And so like so when stuff hits the fan, the world is broken. You know, and so I, I just think that we have to prepare people better. So then we have like, okay, so like these expectations, right? So like you have like, we watch movies, like you see like the rom-coms, you see all these different things where it's like, you can almost have like a Disney Channel perspective on marriage, right? Where it's yeah. like, um, yo, once I'm married, like, you know, it's going to be, you know, it, like it, amazing. And like, I guess what I'm trying to get into, what are some moments, right, where, like, being married, you, where you really sat with yourself and you were like, wow, like, yo, this marriage stuff, this, this, this marriage stuff is really, this is really it. In comparison to, like, being single, you know, there's that, that, that new girl feeling. When you single, you like, all right, just got, just got the number. When you say, wow, this is really it, are you talking about being good or difficult? I don't, being I good, being good. Gotcha. See, cause, you know what I mean? Like, because, like, I... We know, I, I, I know the, the dating, uh, what good feels like. You know what I mean? Where it's like, oh, wow, we just got off a date. We really vibed. Or, um, you know what I mean? So the first two years of marriage, <laughs> we didn't like each other. Whoa. <laughs> I'm just being honest. We, just, we, we didn't like each other. But we, you got to break that down because. We, we were friends for three years. And then me ignorantly believing that the transition from friendship to marriage was going to be just easy. I think that he's right, you know, and I and it's 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 kind of like a breath of fresh air to hear a, a a guy speak on the rom com, fairy tale, Disney Channel, you know, because it's fed more to the women. Um, I I remember uh, talking with my past my pastor and his wife from back home, and she <laughs> me and her was saying how I had went on a date. This was when I was still single, and she had. Um, like I, you know, you. She was saying how sometimes with girls, even after the first date, we already planned the wedding. We know what color dress we gonna wear. We know what shoes he gonna have on. You know, we go, we go far in our minds. But I think that um, it is that can be dangerous because it kind of goes back to what Preston was saying at, at first. It it diminishes the work part. 
Yeah. It diminishes the, I love how when people talk about you want to be a student of your spouse, you're forever going to be learning this person. Why? Because this person is not God. Yeah. You know, the Bible says that he is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. That won't be the, the same for your spouse. We change. I even think about us now, um, how, and you know, uh, going from what we met in 2020, you know, now it's, um, 2024. Now we have a young, a young, a seven month year old child, you know, and I know even just all of, you know, 2023 carrying her and now coming into postpartum, I'm not the same, right. Yeah. In any, any form, like I've, I've changed a lot. And so has he. And I think that when we come into it with a fairy tale mindset, with a me, me mindset, or with a highlight real mindset, um, we don't realize that we're going to, this is, this is something that I'm going to have to learn how to evolve with this person. Mm -hmm. Um, give this person room to grow, give this person room to fail, mm -hmm. give this person room to succeed. Sometimes the enemy even have us jealous of our spouses. Like we ain't one. Yeah. If they win, you win. Okay. Um, or if you got the mindset, it's like one or the other, y'all both lose. And so it's like, I think that, um, it goes back to, and I think that they're trying to touch on this, why it's important for those who are married to be honest about all of marriage, yeah. right? Not just the highlight reels. That's great. That's beautiful. You know, the cute pictures I love, but I like when, when the person is real right before this picture, my three-year-old had a tantrum or whatever, you know, um, I think that we need more of the realness so that people aren't blindsided. I try to be honest with my friends. I know I ain't been married the longest, but I am honest, like, you know, and I, I really believe, you know, uh, that our friends get a realistic view. Yeah. Um, they've seen moments of me being a little upset, of both of us. you know, and it's, but I think that, and sometimes it's easy to want to hide that. Like, oh, you know, and of course, don't be out here just arguing and being crazy. Yeah. But we have the tendency to instantly want to squash it. But what if the Lord is trying to show your single friend how to resolve conflict, how to um, have, what is the word, healthy conflict, mm -hmm. healthy um, conversations around things that could go left, but y'all showing this is how to deal with this in a healthy way, in a godly way, in a loving way, in an honorable way. I think that we have to um, be, we have to be, we have to let go of the filters. Mm -hmm. We even, we don't just put filters on our, our pictures. We put filters on our lives and, and it's not helpful to the people who are in the season that we were once in. Right. Yeah. I feel like I learned the most from the friends who were willing to be vulnerable, you know, who were willing to allow me to see them in, in their the rawness. Mistakes. Right. Yeah. I think that's key. Uh, we can end it here. Um, appreciate you all checking this video out. Uh, you know, and this is just an, an idea, a peek into what marriage is like. And uh, coming from someone, you know, Preston, him, him and his wife, they've been married, I think, 10, 11 years? 10 or 10, 11. 10, probably 11 10, years. I think. About, about 10, yeah. And so, it, and, and even with us, you know, we're, we're going on three. And, and just really just seeing what it's like on the other side and... One, it's a beautiful thing, but at the same time, it's challenging. So yeah. we, we appreciate you all checking out this video. Um, check out some of the other ones that uh, YouTube recommends. And you all take care and make today meaningful. Yes, y'all.